Okay, so today we're going to be calling functions within DLLs. So specifically, we are working with native DLLs, so DLLs that are written in C++. Later in this series here, I will also show you how you can run C Sharp DLL. That requires a little bit more tinkering. Today, we're going to be taking a look at just calling a basic native C++ DLL. Now, the first thing we'll need is a library called FFI. If you're using Node version 10 and lower, you can just install the normal version here. So this version here. But if you're using version 11 or higher, you have to use this version, which has a patch version. So if you try running the normal one, it won't actually work as of right now. So if you are seeing this video in the future, please just check if this works and if it does well then you don't have to do this but as of right now we have to apply this fix here now the next thing we'll do is because we're working with javascript strings we actually have to convert them to c strings so that is what this little function does i'm not going to get into details how it's working but it essentially just converts a javascript string into a c string the next thing we're doing is that we're loading this library in the way this works is that you make a new instance of the library function here from ffi you specify the DLL name. The DLL name that can come from this folder, so the folder you're in. And if you're loading a DLL from the folder you're in, you have to prefix it with that. And if you're loading it from Global Simply Cache or System32, then you can just put the name in here. Now, the two places these are usually stored is in here, which is the Global Assembly Cache. And also in here in system 32, there might be more places. Now, the next thing we're doing down here is that we are mapping the functions to its inputs and outputs. So we are in user 32. That's just a library that stands for making the Windows operating system UI and stuff like that. And we are mapping these two functions. So message box W and set cursor precision. The way you get these names and what the inputs and outputs are is here you can access windows 32 api win user and you can see all of the functions in here the two functions we're taking a look at today is the message box w function and the set cursor position function now you can see the inputs down here so you can see that we have a integer as a return and we have an integer and an integer u type is by the way just a 64-bit integer and then we have two text inputs right here so you can also read down here on the types and you can sort of Google around and figure out if the type doesn't stand in here. But you can use this as a pretty good guide to figure out what the inputs are. And here you can see it's very simple. It's just returns a Boolean and takes in two integers. But you will have to Google a little around to find the inputs and outputs. But once you have done that, then we can actually call these functions. So the first function we're calling is the message box. So we are putting in a zero. And if we go in here under the documentation for this. Uh, so the first parameter, we can just leave zero. You can read on right here what it does. And the next parameter here controls the text and then the title. And then the last one here determines the type. So the type you can see down here, but I've also found that you can also actually just find it here on the return type. So if you change the number here, so the last number here to any of these numbers here, you will actually get these different pop-ups here. And then we run the text through this uh, text function up here, which I explained earlier to convert it to a C string. Then what we're doing is that we're just showing that return of that function, which you can go ahead and see what that would be. That would be uh, an integer. So that's just a cancel or okay in this case. Then the last thing we're doing is that we're setting the cursor position to zero, zero. So that will move the mouse up here. Now let's try actually running this code. And you can see that we get a message box. You can see down here that it actually is running from the node exe. So if I press OK, you can see the return here. And uh, now I moved my mouse. But if we run this again, you can see that if I press OK and don't move my mouse, you can see that my mouse moves up in the corner. The return here is just a return on whatever button I clicked. So let's try running it again. This is by the way got just cancel. It's just in Danish. So let's press this button here. 
and you can see that we get a different response. Okay, so that was just a basic look at this library here called FFI. I hope you learned something. And in the next video in this series, we're going to be taking a look at a more advanced example on how to run more advanced code. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully I see you in the next one.